Yeah, you were just talking to uh, Mr. Mathis, I huh? I was talking to Mr. Mathis. My gosh, what, that was amazing. Yeah, what, what a great a, guy. What a brave man. Yeah. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. Yeah, it seems like the last time I saw you, you said we were going to do the show in the White House, and yeah. we were all excited about that. Yeah, we would have, too. Yeah, we, we were going to do that. Yeah. Uh, well, it didn't work out that no, way. No, it didn't. So it didn't. I thought I'd come back and see how you're doing. Yeah, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Not so good. Not, Not so, so good. good. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a, there, well, but you know, I'm trying to stay in a really positive frame of mind. You know, I always say when people ask me, how are you? I say, well, as a person, I'm okay, but as an American, I'm really concerned. I'm a little tiny less concerned after Alabama because I think it was a, a great example of people understanding what was at stake and working hard and actually turning out and voting. Nothing is more important than that. Yeah. So it that, was that, positive. Th yeah, that showed that. Um, So, so let's, let's, I mean, you talk about it in your book, but, but let's talk about it. So you were here three weeks before the election. Yes. You were confident. I was. I was confident. A lot of people were confident. You, I mean, it seemed like this, it was a for sure thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a shock. What happened? What, what was going through your mind when you saw what was happening? Well, it, it's one of the reasons why I decided to write the book, because um, I didn't know what happened. I, I was... You know, I knew there were certain factors at work, and after the election, I learned a lot more about the impact that they had. I mean, it was a perfect storm. I mean, there were a lot of currents of resentment and anger about all kinds of things uh, in the, you know, in the country. There was a lot of sexism and misogyny, which now, thankfully, we're kind of pulling out of the dark and talking about. There was voter suppression, people trying to prevent other Americans from being able to vote. There was the FBI's intervention uh, on October 28th after I saw you, which had a devastating effect because, you know, people thought, oh, my gosh, I can't vote for somebody who's, you know, once again under FBI investigation, even though there was, again, nothing to it. And then there were the Russians, the Russians. And the Russians were much more involved than even I understood. And so after the election and after the real devastating shock of it, I, I kept saying, well, I... What happened? How, wh you know, because I wanted to understand it. Because obviously I made mistakes, my campaign made mistakes, every, every candidate, every campaign does, and I wanted to be as candid about those as possible. But I knew that there was more at work, and so it wasn't just about me and my election. It really was about these forces at play. So I decided I'd dive in and write this book. It was really painful. I mean, I'd write, and I'd literally have to go and lie down. It was so painful. Um, but it ended up being cathartic. And so writing the book, um, going for walks in the woods, uh, playing with my dogs, doing yoga, seeing my grandkids, cleaning my closets, uh, <laughs> drinking Chardonnay, I mean, all of that, all of that. That worked. all helps. Yeah, that all yeah. helped a lot. And, and, and during that time, did, I mean, is there any part of you now or during that time that you're just like, Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, your whole life has been that. Yeah. So are you yeah. happy now to just be a person and, and have freedom? And Because that must have been exhausting. It's great. I get to see my friends, my family. I get to, you know, do things that I really enjoy. On the other hand, I see things happening that I, I know are bad for the country. And, you know, one of the reasons I was so thrilled about Doug Jones getting elected is that all through his campaign, he talked about reauthorizing the children's health insurance program, something that I helped to start in the late 90s, which was totally bipartisan. And nine million kids get their health care uh, because of it. And it's going to run out, and kids are going to lose their health care. So I was so proud and grateful to see somebody say, hey, we got to get this reauthorized. So I do see things that go on every day that really disturb me a lot. And... I, obviously, I think, you know, I wouldn't have done that, or, boy, I can't believe they're doing this. Um, so, yeah, it does bother that me. That must so. happen every five minutes. It does. I mean, it, like, it does. <laughs> like, that's why I, I'm on a kind of news diet. Yeah. You know, because I can't watch it all the time because I, I really do get agitated. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. can imagine. I mean, I, it's, I feel the same way. Like, I'm, I try to say it because it upsets me so yeah. much. And when yeah. you see what's going on, and you can't write some of this stuff. You're just thinking, if this was a movie, people would go, oh, that can't, there's no way. That would... And, and it just continues to go on. I mean... Do you think that he's really going to last four years? Uh, well, you know, I, I can't 
I, I can't answer that. I can't predict it, but I, but I believe that it really does come down to both the investigation that's going on and to whether Republicans will decide that you know, they have to put our country before their party. And I hope that enough of them will decide to do that because it is, it's disturbing and it's, it's obviously upsetting to me because I see things happening around the world that are bad for our country, that are dangerous, that really pose a threat. And then I see all this happening inside our country. And when they, you know, when they push through this tax plan, it's going to hurt so many people. Yeah. And, you know, look, it's going to help a lot of really rich people. That's who they care about. That's who their donors are. But it's going to hurt. I mean, can you imagine taking away the deduction for teachers who buy supplies for their classrooms? I mean, who no. thinks like that? No. And so there's a lot that's going to end up hurting people. Um, and then, obviously, flaming the, fa the flames of white supremacy and and misogyny and, and homophobia and everything else that is uh, unfortunately at work. So I think there, there will be an invest, the investigation will go on and that will lead where it leads. But at some point, Republicans who control the Congress have to say, you know, we don't really want to let this go on. We have to investigate. Yep. Or we have to win back the House and the Senate yep. in next November, which is something I hope we do, and then yeah. we can get back yeah. to doing the people's business. Yeah. All right, we have to take a break. Um, I have to say, I mean, I, I don't want to, because I don't believe in uh, that you can group a whole b bunch of people together. There are some Republicans that are really good, good people and have good intentions. So it is the, the party, the Republican Party, this is not what it was. That's right. This is not what it should be. And so I do not want to bash Republicans. I don't want to bash anybody. We just want, uh, you know, I think that's important for me to say, because I obviously wanted you to be president and, and uh, believed in you and, and have strong opinions, but I also want to say that, you know, I don't judge everybody by this president.